Good morning. Good morning. So again, my name's Jeff, and I am terrible with a microphone, so I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, I'm not used to a microphone. Let's there we go. Let's see if I'm getting this going. So we're going to talk about quite a few things today. I've got a lot up here. Um, I tend to be long-winded, but what I want this to be is to be a discussion, really, not me just standing on a stage talking at you. So at any point, if you have a question or a comment or want some clarification, stand up, raise your hand, yell at me, anything. I'm easy. I'm country from the bayou. I'm used to people yelling at me. That's how we talk. So feel free. I want you to be involved. Today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about sitting is the new smoking. At things like this we always hear about, we need to exercise more, we get lots of science thrown at us and that sort of a thing. But what we are now learning is that just sitting is bad for us, even if you exercise regularly. Sitting is really what's detrimental. So we're going to talk about what that means. We're going to talk about moving more often. We hear a lot about moving more. We need to exercise more. I really like to talk about moving more often throughout the day. And we're going to talk about why that's important, how to fit that into our day. And then we're going to take it to the next level, if you'll forgive my pun. We're going to talk about how I use some technology to hit my goals, to reach my goals, to keep track of what's going on with me and my body and, and my wellness and my health and how simple things can make big differences in outcomes and really how we're seeing that. But we're going to start by moving. We are going to move a lot today, so I hope you're okay with that. We're not going to be running around. We probably won't break a sweat, but we are going to take quite a few exercise breaks throughout the day. That's really one of the things that I think is the most important in our day-to-day -day life. Often we think, I can't find 30 minutes to get an exercise in. I don't have time to drive to the lakes and walk around them. I can't, I have too much to do to go to the gym. When really, if we just take a few minutes Often throughout our day to move, we can fit those minutes in and we can get off of our seats and get our blood moving. So in that vein, I want everybody to put down whatever you have in your hands and I want you to stand up. We're going to do a lot of different types of things throughout the day. Exercise is not just running. It's not just lifting weights. It's a lot of different things. So what I want everybody to start by doing is just kind of standing nice and tall, arms relaxed at your side, kind of shake your shoulders, loosen them up a little bit. And I want you to start by taking a long, slow, deep breath in. And let it out nice and slow. In. And out. In. And out. In. And out. And on this last one, we're just going to hold it for a few seconds. In. And hold. And let it out. Five deep breaths will actually cause our body to have an endocrine response. We'll release hormones into our system that travel to our brains, that help elevate our mood, that help our mood, that help our brains retain and focus better. It just does a lot of big things. Just five deep breaths can make a difference in your perspective in that moment. It also gets us out of our chair, and even that is physical activity, right? Just the act of standing up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stand up. We're going to work on our quads a little bit. So I want everybody, I'm going to steal a chair because I need a chair. I'm going to sit to the side. I want, can everyone see me? Because I want to talk about how to stand up for a moment. Often when we sit and we're standing, if our chair has arms, we grab the arms, we kind of lean forward and use a lot of our body to push ourselves up. That's really bad for us. It's bad posture, it's bad for our backs, it's bad for our guts, it's bad for a lot of different things. When we stand, and we're going to do this, this is why I'm demonstrating it, come to the edge of your chair, feet, move your feet to the center of your gravity so your feet are under your hips nice and wide, and then we often want to look down because I guess we want to see where we're going if we fall, right? <laughs> Most of us are not going to fall. So 
Find a spot in front of you, look forward, and really from there, use your legs, don't bend. We look forward because it's the looking down that bends us. And then we're just gonna stand. I want everybody to try that. Everybody have a seat. Come to the edge of your chair. Feet nice and wide, heels under your, your center of gravity. We're not tucking them under the chair, we're just bringing them in close. Look forward, you can look at me, and just up. Nice. Now let's sit. Keep those feet exactly where they are. We're just going back to that edge of our chair spot. And up. And sit. And up. And sit. Up. Sit. Up and sit. Nice job. You just did five squats. <laughs> it's that easy. Oftentimes we think we can't do it, but if you just find one minute to stand and sit a few times, you've worked your quads, you've worked your core, you're up and down. Our quad muscles are giant. And so even a little bit of resistance work like that goes a long way towards changing the way that our body reacts to food and fitness. When we do resistance work, we cause the number of muscle cells in our muscles to multiply. We cause the number of mitochondria, that's a big word, in each muscle cell to multiply. Mitochondria in your cells burn fat. More muscle cells, more plus more mitochondria equals a faster metabolism. Is there anybody in here who would like a faster metabolism? Yeah. Right. It helps us more readily process our food so that we use it as energy instead of storing it as fat. Resistance work is important, but it doesn't have to mean going to the gym and throwing some big metal plates around the room. It can be as simple as standing up and sitting down. Now, sitting is the new smoking. I say that a lot these days. If you've been in just about any presentation I've done on just about any topic, you can ask me to come and talk about frozen yogurt. I'm gonna talk about why sitting is the new smoking because it causes tons of problems. People who sit all day long, most people of us, most of us do, we have jobs where we have to sit at a desk. We go home and we sit in front of a television. We sit down to do homework. We sit down to eat. We sit down to do almost everything. I drive a lot for work, which means I'm sitting for hours at a time. When I'm not driving, I'm at a computer and I'm sitting for hours at a time. Then I go home and I sit to eat dinner and then I sit to watch TV. That's a lot of sitting. I'm a very physically active person. I'm a, I'm a marathon runner, that's my hobby. I'm gonna run the half marathon tomorrow in New Orleans. I'm very excited. Um, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters because what all of the research has shown is it doesn't matter if you're running a marathon every weekend. Independent of physical activity, sitting is damaging to our bodies. So if you're exercising every single day, you're getting the hour a day that all of the science tells us we need to live a long quality lives. If you're sitting all day, you're negating almost all of that. And we want to prevent that. When we talk about organ damage, I'm talking about your heart. When we move our muscles, when we move our legs, when we move all of the big muscles, it contracts our blood vessels. It sends blood around our body. So when we sit, none of that's happening. We don't get that, that force of blood moving. The only thing moving our blood is our heart, and we're not doing anything, so it slows that down. When we slow our blood flow down, it allows the uh, cholesterols and the plaques and the fats to settle in our blood vessels. When they settle, they lock themselves in place. That's how we get fatty buildup in our blood vessels and in our heart that leads to heart disease. Plus, when we are sedentary, and we eat anything, and we're sitting all day, our pancreas releases insulin, but because our muscle cells aren't doing anything, they don't as readily take up that insulin so they can pull the glucose, the energy from our food, out of our blood. So it sits there. We've actually found that, not we, they have actually found, I won't take credit for someone else's research, they have actually found that even just one day of sitting an entire day 
causes a decreased insulin response. That decreased insulin response over time leads to what? Diabetes. It's that quick. It doesn't matter what you're eating or how much you're moving. If you're sitting all day long, you have an increased risk of heart disease and diabetes. You also have an increased risk of certain types of cancer. In this room, the important types are breast cancer and um, endometrial cancer. Those are major cancers that affect tons of women, and more and more of the research is showing that just sitting all day long increases your risk significantly of those types of cancers. That's a big deal, right? So just sitting can be undoing everything we're doing. Foggy brain, I talked about our blood not moving. If your blood's not moving, it's not bringing the things that your brain needs to stay active. You're gonna get what it needs to stay alive, but alive is not enough, right? It's about being active, about being quality, about remembering, about engaging. How many of us in here work every day? If you're sitting all day long, by about the mid-afternoon, how many of you are hunting for a cup of coffee? That's because we've been sitting and our brain is not getting the amount of blood flow that it needs, the oxygen, the nutrients, all of those things to stay active. Getting out of your chair regularly is going to pump up your brain's response just to your normal day. You'll remember better, you'll have less mental fatigue, you'll interact with people better, you'll stay focused for longer. And then muscle degeneration is a big one. That's a big, big one. We sit all day long, and it doesn't matter how much you're exercising. Sitting all day long, most of us end up slumping, we end up, our neck goes out of alignment, tons of things start happening. Not only do our muscles start to atrophy, they stop working, but then we also see things like our hip flexors start to shorten, our quads get weaker, our back starts to tighten. And I say hip flexors first because we don't think about it. It's a little bitty muscle that runs right here. But this starts to tighten and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And before you know it, we're 50, we're 60, and we're walking around like this because our pelvis is so far out of alignment that we can't actually maintain a proper posture. It throws our entire back out of whack. Okay, I do not work out at all. I don't get out. Uh, if I'm doing it, I don't get out. Bad. That's perfect. That's what it's about. It's about just not sitting. You don't have to go to the gym and work out. We'll talk a lot about how we can do that, but it's about just not sitting. So if it's up and cleaning, if it's up and um, in and out in the garden, if it's up with the kids, if it's up and down with the grandkids, if it's as long as it's not sitting. It's about changing our posture, moving throughout the day. I, ha I have switched to a nice standing desk, but even that we know that if I'm here and all I'm doing is this, it's better than sitting, but it's not as good as this. It's still one position all day long. So it's really about moving around. Another thing that happens is there's a muscle inside of us that connects the top of our leg up into our spine. It's called the psoas muscle. And it shortens the same way our hip flexor shortens. And what it does is it starts pulling on our back. So our hips out of alignment, and then it's pulling on our spine and pulling it out of alignment inside, and we end up all wonky. We end up with lots of back pain. We end up not being able to stand. We've been sitting for so long that we have weaker um, leg bones. We've started to have osteoporosis building in and setting in. And then our back is all out of whack. And then what happens? We lose our mobility. Our center of gravity is all twisted and in the wrong spots. Our bones are weak. That's, when we, that's why we have so many fall risks. Our modern society where people spend so much time sitting has a direct correlation with the number of falls in people in advanced middle age. It's happening younger and younger. We sit so long that our bones are weak, or we're twisted all out of alignment, and then we go to take a step and everything's so twisted out, it snaps the head of that leg bone and you fall. Most hip breaks happen from the, the fall happens from the break not the break happening from the fall. The hip breaks and then you fall, not vice versa. It's about standing, not sitting, puts all of this in alignment. It keeps these muscles nice and long. It keeps our back in alignment. It keeps our center of gravity where it needs to be. So when we're walking, we can take good steps. We can lift our feet. We're not here 
where we can't, I can't even, I, I can't even literally extend my leg all the way because I'm so out of alignment. And it looks exaggerated, but how many of you have a grandma who walks with the cane like this? And it's, it's a real, true position. And it's a real problem. I tell people all the time, I want to live to be triple digits, but only if I can walk myself to the toilet. If you've heard me talk before, I say it all the time. It's about quality years, not quantity of years, right? I don't want to live to 100 if I'm completely dependent on my grandkids to take care of me because I can't get out of the bed. These sorts of things that happen from sitting all day long are not about running marathons. They're about reaching for a cup of coffee and not throwing your back out. They're about being able to lift your foot high enough to climb the stairs or get into your car or get into your bed, or more importantly, to get out of your car and to get out of your bed. Because it's when we get out of those places that the real life happens, right? That's what it's about. And sitting is robbing us of that. Same thing with our neck, our shoulders, and our back. Everything in our spine goes out of alignment when we sit for long periods of time because we don't maintain our posture when sitting. What ends up happening is our spine twists, we arch our neck, we arch our back, and the longer it sits in that position, the more your pads between each vertebra start to stay in that position. They start squeezing, they start locking, they start hardening. You're not getting the fluid moving around them, keeping them nice and supple. You don't get that. That ends up turning into things like irreparable back damage, uh, herniated discs, chronic back pain, those sorts of things. And we want to avoid all of those things. And then lastly, leg disorders. This is where I'm going to bring some vanity into the situation. Sitting for long periods of time, day after day after day, causes everything in our legs to start going bad. Our glutes, because when we're sitting, we're not using them at all we end up with saggy bottoms. No one wants a saggy bottom, right? We, don't. we end up with squishy, soft abs that protrude. We end up with the muscles that are weak. And because blood's not flowing through these blood vessels the way that they need to, the way that is best for them, we end up developing varicose veins. We end up, it, not we, you, I'm a guy, so I'm, I have that luxury. I don't develop varicose veins. But women who sit all day long, you end up with legs that not only have health issues associated with them, but over time become less and less attractive, if you will, if you'll forgive me that term. We end up with lots of problems that probably not all of us want. I don't care what your motivations are for um, getting out of the chair, whether it's I want to walk to the toilet at 100, or I want to be able to get onto the floor and play with my grandkids, or I want legs that look nice in a swimsuit. I don't care what your motivations are. Your motivations are your motivations. So whichever one gets you up out of the chair is the right one, right? We spend too much time judging each other's motivations instead of celebrating each other's accomplishments. And so I like to throw that out there. Now, let's move. Everybody up. I want everybody to take one big deep breath and bring your arms up with it. Let it out and push up. Feel that stretch. I want you to twist to your left and back to center. Take a deep breath in, let it out, and twist to your right. Back to center and relax your arms. Now I want you to bring your left knee up and down. Hold a chair if you need to. If you're on the front row, you don't have one in front of you, so grab the one behind you. Right knee, down, left knee, down, right knee, down. Bring your opposite arm up with it. And up. And up. And up. And up. Now I want you to lift that one leg, hold onto the chair with one finger if you need to. And I want you to just hold it. Have your opposite arm up, I apologize. You can put your arm out if you need. Do whatever you need to just hold this leg up. Balance exercises are exercises. If you need to put your leg closer to your ankle, if you need to tap that foot down to the floor to regain where you're at, drop that foot and lift the other. And we're just holding it. This is working all of the muscles in our legs, all those stability muscles. Stability muscles are really important. 
I run, I run forward. I work quads, hamstrings, and calves. There's a whole lot of other muscles in my legs, right? And it's those other muscles that keep me healthy, that keep me from falling, that keep me from getting injured, that, that really keep me upright and going. Balance exercises work all of those. Drop your foot, take a deep breath in, and let it out, and have a seat. Balance exercises also, just taking a few minutes to work on balance during your day has a huge impact on focus, on productivity, on memory. It really does things to our brains that help us function at a better rate. When I was working in pediatrics, I worked with kids and one of the things we did, because I had a very progressive pediatrician that I worked for, would send ADHD kids to me and we would, as part of their treatment plan, we would work with balance boards with the kids. We would just play on a balance board because just improving balance, working on balance exercises causes changes in the brain that help treat a lot of the signs and symptoms of ADHD. And while you might not be ADHD, we all could probably afford from having better memory, better focus, better concentrations, right? So balance is an important exercise that we often skip. Now, about moving more often. I have several strategies that I use most of them are based in research, but they tend to work. And I, I like to get up every morning and exercise for an hour because it's fun, but that's not the only way to do it. And we often think about it that way. Really taking time to break it up throughout your day. If it's three 10 minute bouts, fantastic. Get a dog, well, the dog's gotta go, right? You can walk the dog, that's physical activity. But you can also do what we've been doing. You can set a timer, to remind yourself, this is my calendar. Uh, the words are tiny, so I don't know if you can read them all the way, but I schedule everything. I schedule it all. I used to just schedule the important things, the work things. The problem is I'm only at work for eight or 10 hours a day, right? There's a lot of my day that's not there. And those other things should be as important. How many of you use a calendar on paper, on your computer, on your phone. How many of you put your bedtime on your calendar? See that blue bar across the bottom? <laughs> bedtime. It's on there every single day. And I don't always go to bed between 9 and 10 o'clock at night. I'm sometimes up later. But it's on my calendar. And if it's on my calendar and I'm looking at 8 o'clock at night, what my day the, tomorrow is there, I see, oh, I should probably go to bed early tonight because I, I get up at 4.30 every morning. And so if it's on there and I see it when I'm looking at my calendar in the afternoon or in the evening, I know that I need to start doing things early to start preparing for my bedtime. The same thing with my physical activity. Everything that's in yellow up there is some sort of exercise. It looks like a lot more than it is, I promise. My runs are up there, but a lot of them, what you don't see is some of these things are five minute appointments. Every single work day at 9.15 and again at 1.30 is exercise in my day. It's on my calendar. It's there to remind me to do it. They've done lots of studies that say that the best way for us to get up and move multiple times through our day is to be told to do so at that moment. If you say, I'm gonna start getting up every day at 9.15 and going for a walk. I'm legally allowed a 15 minute break. I'm gonna use it at that point to walk around the office, get some exercise in. And that's all you do your likelihood of actually on Monday getting up and walking at 9.15 is slim to none. But if at that moment you go into your phone and you put a calendar that says every day at, during the week at 9.15 I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for a walk, it's on your calendar, it's locked in. You're less likely to schedule something else during that time and you're going to get a reminder. Use the reminders on your phone. How many people in here have a smartphone? Let it be smart. It will ding and tell you it's 9.15. Get up and go for a walk. And then a magic, things hap a thing happens. I'm, um, a magic things happen when you start doing it in 
social settings, when you're at work or when you're around friends, is they start doing it with you. And then all of a sudden, it's much easier. That's where I get to the next tactic. Make it social. This is my morning run group. We, they, people call us the vampire runners because you almost never see us together in the daylight. We, uh, we get together and we run at 5 o'clock in the morning because that's the only time we can all fit it in. And it is, was really difficult to establish that habit. I'm not telling you to run at 5 o'clock in the morning. What I'm telling you is find a group of friends. Find a running club. Find a walking club. Find a gym club. Find a silver sneakers club. Find three women on the block who want to meet up and go for a walk. And what's going to happen is you have that level of accountability. We text every single night who's showing up in the morning. No one wants to be the guy that's like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to sleep in tomorrow morning. Um, I'm sometimes, like this morning, the guy who says, sorry, not coming. But we have to, you have to physically get on your phone and tell someone you're not showing up. You have to break your commitment. And then when we meet, we talk. There is more conversation that happens on this run group than probably happens the rest of my day. We see each other five times a week for an hour, two hours at a time, and we still haven't run out of things to talk about. We show up because it's fun. It's not about going to the gym, being by ourselves on a treadmill, watching Dr. Phil. It, I can, I'm not going to go and do that. I don't want to go and stand by myself. I sit in a cubicle alone all day long, or in a car by myself all day long. I'm sure there's plenty of you who are at home by yourself all day long. The last thing you want to do when you're getting away is go be by yourself again. Find people you love, find people you care about, find people you know, and spend time with them. And while you're doing it, move. It's that easy. Find a group. That's my group. I love these guys. We're running together tomorrow. Make it a family affair. I can't stress this enough. If you have kids, more often than not what happens is kids get home from school and the first thing we ask them to do is sit down and do homework, right? They have a lot of homework. I get it. But what have they been doing all day long? Sitting. Sitting. And then they come home and we ask them to do what? Sit. sit. Let's take that time and rethink it. Kids get home at 3.30, they get home at 4.15. Let's, as a family, say the first thing we're doing when everybody's in the house is we're leaving the house. We're going to put everything down. We're going to put sneakers on if we need to. We're going to grab a sweater if, we're gonna, if we need to. We're going to grab a raincoat if we need to. Because you know what you do when it's raining outside? You splash in puddles. You don't hide inside. You hide from lightning. You don't hide from rain. It can be fun. And it, it turns into, if you do this every single day, not only does the actual homework time get easier, because there's tons of evidence that shows if you take the kids, you let them move around a little bit, let them decompress, when it's time to come back inside and sit down and do homework, they get it done in a fraction of the time with a fraction of the fuss. That makes life easier for everybody, them included. Plus, when you do this every day, when what you do with your kids every day when they get home from school is go for a walk, it could be 15 minutes, it could be half an hour, it could be five minutes, whatever fits. Doing it every single day, before you know it, something magical happens. Your kids forget that they don't want to talk to you. All of a sudden, your kids come home, and that's just what we do. You're talking to them, eventually they start talking back. You build a relationship that gets stronger and more confiding. And in today's world, I can't stress the amount of things that happen to kids every single day that we don't have a single clue about. They lead their own lives that we only get a glimpse of, and the more we can get our kids to talk to us, the better, the safer it is. If you were part of the Vampire Runners, you would know, my, probably my most popular quote is, the internet is evil. And kids can't live without it. They can't function without it. They can't school without it. And so that's a time we can use to kind of sneak into their lives and catch a glimpse while also not sitting. And then lastly, schedule it. I reiterated it because it, I can't say it enough. Schedule it. My lunch is on there because if I don't put it on there, I don't get it. 
I eat it at my desk. I make myself get up from my desk and go to the kitchen and eat my lunch. I have all of my physical activity on there. Sometimes I don't get to do it. If my VP emails me and says, hey, I need to meet at 9.15, I go and meet with my vice president, right? <laughs> I do my job, but if it's on there and she looks at my calendar to see what's going on and she sees 15 minute uh, core workout, we're having a core challenge at work right now, we, every day at 9.15, then she's less likely to ask me to meet at that time. She might say, hey, let's meet at 9.30. If it's on there, not only do you respect it, but other people respect it. Schedule it. Schedule it, schedule it. If it's on your calendar, you're more likely to do it and let your calendar remind you to do it. I exercise at 9.15 in the morning. Yeah, that's my morning. At work, we do a challenge. We're doing, right now, it's 30 days of abs. And so every day at work, everybody that's available in the office gets on the floor in the hallway and does some core work. We did 105 crunches yesterday. Everyone was very excited, including me. Um, and that's good for us. That's my bedtime. 9 o'clock at night is bedtime. <laughs> I can barely read it. It's teeny. It, I can read it much better on my screen here. The, the, the bluish green bar at the bottom is bedtime. It's to remind me to go to bed. Everything yellow is um, exercise. Everything blue is work. So that might be like um, I had a girls on the run board meeting on Wednesday. I had to drive to Monroe on Tuesday. So you see those big blocks are driving time. I put all that on my calendar. I schedule everything. Probably the only thing I don't put on here is bathroom breaks and it's only probably because I've got a bladder the size of a kidney bean and I wouldn't have space for anything else. <laughs> Schedule it. All right. Everybody up. How am I doing on time? 15? Okay. Everybody take a deep breath and let it out. One more. In and out. We're going to try to get our heart rates up a little bit. So I want everybody to start by just lifting your feet. We're not going high. We're not lifting our knees. Just feet off the floor. That's it. Right where we're at. Now let's bring those knees up just a little bit more. Think about getting your feet just past your ankles. Bring your arms in. I want to see arms swinging. Bend those elbows. That hand should be able to touch your hip when you pass it. Swing them. That's knees a little bit higher. You might have to slow your pace. Keep those arms swinging. As our leg motions get bigger, we can make our arm motions bigger. We're moving our shoulders. We're lubricating those joints. We're getting our blood flowing. We're actually doing some quad exercises because we're lifting these legs. We're doing a little bit of calf exercises. We're getting some of our shoulder and back. We're opening up our rib cages. We're getting a lot accomplished. And all we're doing is marching in place. I want everybody to slow it back down. Bring it back down back into place. I want you to keep those toes on the ground, but keep those heels moving. You should be bobbing back and forth. Loosening up those toes, the bones in our feet, keeping the arches of our feet nice and supple. Those arches tighten up as we age. And if we don't really think about exercising our feet the same way we exercise our legs and our arms, we lose mobility in them. And our feet need to move, right? Can't walk to the toilet without feet. All right. Now, I want everybody to stand nice and tall. Come up onto your toes and drop it. Onto your toes. I'm too close to the front of the stage. And drop it. <laughs> toes and down. Toes and down. And toes and down. Nice job. Have a seat. I'm going to be very fast with these next few things. This is the tech part. This is what I do to stay active, to stay engaged. Keep a weight log. I can't stress this enough. Maintaining a healthy weight can only happen if we know what we weigh. There's this great study that was done where they looked at people who used a free online tool to log their weight. What they found was that 
in a 30-day period, people who logged their weight at least once per week, not weighed themselves, but actually logged it somewhere, lost 11 more pounds in one month than those who didn't log their weight. Everybody was weighing themselves, but only one group was writing it down somewhere. I weigh myself every single day, and I put it in here. And I don't weigh myself every day because I want to know what I weigh every day. I weigh myself every day because I want to know what the averages are. Because some days I'm just, I ran a lot and I'm dehydrated and I dropped weight. Other days I ate boiled crawfish and I'm full of water because it was, had so much salt on it. I want to look at what my averages are, and I can only do that if I weigh myself. You don't need to weigh yourself every, every single day, but Keeping a record of what you weigh, if that's what you're focusing on, works. What you see up here on the left is my fitness pal, and what you see up here on the right is the Lose It app. I just plug it in. You can see it. So yesterday I was 166.8. Today, when I weighed myself, I was 167.9. I know that because it was in there. That's almost no change. You can see I fluctuate a lot, and in the summer months, I tend to, be, tend to weigh less. In the winter months, I weigh more, but I can see those trends. When I have graphs like this and I see things happening, I can also know, hey, I've been steadily creeping up for a couple of weeks. What's been going on? Is it, um, I see, I've been creeping up. I'm buying a house. I have, I have a sick father. We, work's been stressful. I've been traveling a lot for work lately, so I'm on the road and I'm not making the best decisions. I can look and say, what's going on in these last however many weeks that's causing that uptick, and then I can put some focus into maybe finding ways to overcome those, because all of those things are barriers. I can think about things like, I can't help my sick father if I'm getting sick, so I need to take care of myself so that I can take care of him. I need to pack snacks with me so that I'm not buying them at gas stations, those sorts of things. You can make an effort because you know what's going on. You don't need a fancy online tool. I was engaged in health coaching with one of our health coaches. This was the tool we used. I logged my weight every day. It did the math for me for my averages. You can see in this month of November, I didn't lose any weight at all. I started at 162, I ended the month at 162. But I knew what was going on and I could say, why is the number not moving? I was actively trying to lose weight at that time. Then you've got to know what you're eating. You've got to know what you're eating because if you don't know what you're eating, you don't know where the problems lie. And that isn't always about saying, how many calories am I bringing in? Because that's fantastic. But if you see that, uh, that number ticking up or ticking down, you have a record of what's going on. I use my fitness pal. It automatically populates to uh, lose it. So I have two logs. My fitness pal, and I use just about every app on the market. I'm not endorsing one over the other. I'm most familiar with my fitness pal. Lose it does the same thing. Now you can scan foods. If it has a barcode, you can scan it. When I make a meal, I can go into my fitness pal, hit recipe, and I scan every item I'm putting in the pot. If it doesn't have a barcode, like a bag of green beans, I can put in green beans, and then it calculates the whole recipe for me. It tells me what I got, and I can say I ate one-fourth of it and it'll put that onto my log. I know what I'm getting. I am less concerned with calories than I am with fruits and vegetables because we know that if you eat more fruits and vegetables, you will be healthier. Oh, okay, I'll be fast. I count fruits and vegetables. That's that column with the fours, five, sixes, and sevens, five a day. And then make all of your work count. Track your fitness. I wear a Fitbit, it tracks my sleep, it tracks my step. I also wear a Garmin when I run so that I know what I'm doing. I get reminders. And this is not necessarily about knowing that I have burned X number of calories. It's really about saying, I've missed a day on my log, I've missed four days on my log, that accountability with yourself, and because both Fitbit and Garmin have social factors, I have friends who will call me and be like, you haven't logged a run in several days, what's going on? Or you're only getting 2,000 steps a day, what's going on? I bring it all together by using these simple apps and tools. Again, you can see my mileage on there, and that's it. We're not gonna move again, we're gonna take a second, I've got less than five minutes for questions.